put your hands together again for Dr. Kelly. And we are going to have Mr. Dan Hackfors come up and speak with us for about um, 10, 15 minutes. And I think the importance of having him speak is because it's so important for us to sell ourselves. People, I, I, in fact, through him, I connected to a great position with NBC um, locally, WILX10, and he made that connection when we met, he connected with someone else, and they looked at me and said, well, you know, if you know Dan, then, hey, you're good people, and that's important when it comes to networking and taking what you're doing to the next level and manifesting your life to win. So I, I actually didn't originally plan for him to speak today, but since he's here, um, I believe before we bring Princess Fumi on at 11, um, in about 15 minutes, it is important to hear from him since we have a webinar. We have people are watching online and commenting um, and reacting to how we are trying to make a change in our local community in Michigan for young people. So he's a teacher, he's someone that, that the community needs to connect with. Uh, when we have our different events we want to have uh, media-wise this next year, we want people like him to come speak. Because at the end of the day, after we film something, um, we also have to talk about sales. How do we turn what we're doing, like Dr. Sherry said, into profit? Is it just by the thank yous? Is it making a change, actually having students come back and say, that event you guys held, or that project you did for this year in media has changed my life. It has made me more outspoken. I can go out now and I can conquer. I can say anything or do anything I want because someone has decided to start a program that will allow me to have a voice as a young person, which is what we're doing today. So it's important to learn how to sell ourselves and sell this um, uh, product of um, this media product that we have. And I think that's something that Dan can cover um, for us today. So please, without further ado, welcome Dan Hagfors. He is, uh, he will introduce himself and tell you a little bit about what he does and then he'll speak to our youth. Thank you again, Dan. Thank you, uh, Edna. It's a pleasure to be here. A uh, little bit about me. Uh, again, my name's Dan Hagfors. Uh, I graduated from Michigan State with a marketing degree. And I thought in 1982 that the uh, doors would be open and I'd be able to find a job anywhere. And what I found out is uh, the doors weren't open and I wasn't able to find a job. And like a lot of uh, graduates from college today, I had to move back home with my parents and it was a very humbling experience after being on my own and uh, having to move back home. What I found out was uh, my dad didn't want me around the house. He says, you've got a college degree, you gotta go out and find a job. And he asked me one day uh, when I was watching Gilligan Island reruns in my sweatpants, <laughs> how many resumes have you sent out today? And I said, well, as soon as mom is done with dinner, I'm gonna go up and send some out. And he had a Detroit Free Press under his arm and he said, if you want to eat dinner tonight, you need to send out five resumes, have them addressed, and bring them down, and I'll mail them in the morning for you. And that was cold. I went up to my room, I slammed the door, and I said, I hate it here. But something happened. My stomach started growling, because I could smell the meatloaf that mom was making all day. And my stomach said, if you want to eat, just do what Dad said. So I filled out those resumes, put them in mail, envelopes and mail. Well, I didn't get a job from that, but I did get a job from not the university where they had all these businesses come in and talk to you. See, uh, I graduated as a C student, I'm not proud of it. But somebody told me a long time ago, the C students of the world, they rule the world. And that's because I was a C student because I had to pay my way through school and I was always having a job. And hence, having a job meant uh, I didn't have the time to study like I should have. You see, knowledge is important. But today, with this, it's a commodity. 
And we spend our whole life gaining knowledge when it's at our fingertips now, folks. And I'm an adjunct professor at LCC because, you see, I got fired from a sales career that I spent 26 years in. I was the number one seller in broadcast sales and radio in this community. And I felt what it was like being on top of the hill, king of the hill. And it was a scary feeling because people were always looking to knock you off. And when I became a number at a corporation, a Fortune 500 corporation, and they decided to let 350 of their managers go, I was in that meeting with HR and the director of sales in Detroit. And he says, Dan, it has nothing to do with you and your success and what you've done for our company, but you're just a number and we have to let you go. And that's how I finished my career in sales after 27 years. And I said, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Here I am in my 50s and just let go from a Fortune 500 company. What am I going to do? I didn't have the guts to open up my own business. But now I had to. I didn't have a choice. You see, when I got into the field of broadcasting, one of my mentors said, my only recommendation is to save money. Put money away. Because what I've seen in broadcasting is a great career, but I've seen good people be let go because of new owners, new managers, new personalities. Whatever the reason, good people will get let go. So when I uh, had to start my own business, which is a consulting firm, Hagforce Marketing Team, HMT. I, I, I place people's advertising for them. You see, I built a reputation in the community that people can trust me with their advertising dollars. And I'm talking tens of thousands of dollars that I will place it in a very productive way in getting them results. And that was wonderful, and I'm celebrating this month this month I got fired, so I opened up my business in October of 2009. So, thank you. But there was a yearning inside of me to do something else. And that's when I became a, an instructor at LCC. Um, see, I want to give back. You know, 26 years of failure, because, you know, I had to fail nine times before I got that yes the tenth time. You know, how can I tell the youth of today that failure is something that we can learn from? Failure is something that we can move forward and use as a stepping stone to be successful. So that's why I took this position at the marketing department at LCC because this is one of the few community colleges that teach a sales class. And I'm like, wow. See, I went to Michigan State, they didn't have a sales class, they had a sales management class. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to become a sales manager after I graduated, but without knowing or having experience of sales, I couldn't manage anyone because I hadn't done it before. So what I teach is Sales, but more importantly, and Edna knows from being in my classes here, and Jeff I see, and Bruce was here, um, some past students, is it's not about me. It's about them. The wisdom in the room is multiplied by the number of people that are there. See, everybody's a book just waiting to be read. And we talk about being a good listener. There's a reason God gave us two of these and one of these. And if we don't take the time to ask somebody, like doctor asked me, are you, did you have brothers or sisters? How many? You know, that's conversation. That's getting to know people. And we did find we have a common element. We don't have sisters. That's that void in our life where we both can talk about growing up with brothers 
But how about sisters and sisterhood? That's a void that we'll always have. So there is a common commonality into us. But had she not taken the time to question me and ask me about me, she would have never known that we were very much alike. And that's what I teach my students is find out what it is about other people that makes them tick. See, again, if, if you realize that everybody's a novel, and you think about, you know, I remember my son showed me the Harry Potter book that he read, and it was like that thick. You went through all that? Oh, yeah. Everyone is like that. Everybody has a story. I had a sales class Friday at LCC, and I was talking about the difference of being hired, and, and you gentlemen talked about it as well, is it's not about the smarts. It's about what other things have you done. And I said, one of the things you're going to get in the interview question is, what kind of sales experience do you have? And I asked all the students in the class, does anybody have sales experience? And nobody raised your hand. And I asked one gentleman, Jason, in the back room, who works at Meyer, no, Kroger, stocking shelves overnight. I said, that's sales. And he looked at me like, what? I said, see, sales is a job where you are very independent and you're on your own. You don't have somebody looking over you like you're in a manufacturing plant looking to see how your progress is. Your progress is you're an independent person. Go out and make it happen. I says, does your manager trust you that you're going to have all those lines of uh, groceries in order? You're very independent, you're trustworthy, and you can do it on your own. To me, that shows you would be successful in sales. 